Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of Dying to Know More. Today we will be talking about a very unique topic for the Dying Light franchise, which is parkour. I hope that my next guest will tell us some juicy details about parkour in Dying Light Just a Human. Hello, Timon. Hello, everyone. Hi, Paulina. So we've already said how important it is to us to deliver very realistic parkour, but how do you achieve that in a video game? So yes, that was the core goal to create a video game, a parkour video game, which is as close to real life parkour as possible. So we have an adaptation of skills and moves that people who practice this real life sport do. Mm -hmm. And we have worked with David Bell, the father of parkour, and we have used his experience, his insights, his feedback to create something that I hope looks very well on the screen, very realistic. But please keep in mind that this is a video game. So we had to change some things for the sake of experience so everyone can get fun out of it. So about these changes, what is the difference between real life parkour and the parkour in the game? Well, there are some differences, definitely, but let me start with this one, the most important one. So when you do parkour in real life, you have your normal human field of view. Mm -hmm. And you see in front of you, like a huge distance, you see on your sides. So you process a lot of information about your surroundings. Mm -hmm. You are also fully aware of your body, of its limitations. So you combine those informations to decide what you want to do next. What's your next step? And in the game? Well, in the game is a little different because in the game, first of all, you are limited to what you see on the screen. So the field of view is different. You only see in front of you. Mm -hmm. And also your body awareness is not on the same level. So we had to do something to help players a little bit, to give them a little handicap. Uh, so um, first of all, when you run, when you parkour in the game, you need that extra time to make the correct decision what you want to do next. And uh, this is the main reason why some of the animations in our game last a little longer in the final moments of their sequence. This is also the reason why Aidens, when he jumps, he stays in the air a little bit longer than a normal person would do. But this was very, very necessary for us and this is very important for the experience because without it, it would be very hard to play and to be honest, even hard to watch on the screen. Hard to watch on the screen, but why? Exactly, I said that. And uh, simply speaking, and I will be brutal here, you could feel dizzy and you could feel motion sickness. And we had this issue with a small faction of our players from Dying Tide 1. So we have doubled up on methods to make sure the game will be comfortable to play for everyone. Okay, so everyone can feel like a superhuman. Superhuman is maybe too much of a word, more like an athlete, because Aiden is just like that. So I will get a little nerdy here. So Aiden, in the game, runs at the speed of a little less than 7 meters per second, which mm -hmm. is about 23 kilometers per hour, which is about 14 miles per hour. So sprinters do that numbers. Okay, so he runs like a normal person, yes. but jumps higher. But what about gravity? Okay, so that's actually very interesting, nerdy a little bit too. <laughs> and I think this may surprise you. So of course we simulate a lot of physics in Dying Light to stay human. And we also use a lot of physics variables. For example, the gravity. And the gravity in Dying Light 2 is set to exactly 9.8 meter per second, which is... Mm, standard gravity on Earth. <laughs> exactly, that's that. And the funny thing is that in Dying Light 1, and the island, the value was about twice as big. So that was unrealistic. But when you are used to the previous game, when you watch the trailers or gameplays uh, on the internet, you might think that something is off. But I hope that when you start playing the game, you will feel that it, the Aiden, Aiden's moves feel more natural and more realistic this way. Okay, so physics and numbers aside. Aside. I am very curious. What is the most unrealistic thing that Aiden can do? Uh, well, unrealistic, maybe not. Um, mm -hmm. We are friends with the story team, the guys that do those crazy parkour videos on YouTube. And once they told us that parkour in Dying Light 2 is basically parkour on steroids. Mm -hmm. So there's more, it's more like it. So for example, Aiden can do something like a double jump. Well, it's not like a real double jump that he jumps twice in the air, but if there's something in the air he can spring off, then he can do that. 
Maybe it's impossible to do in real life. Maybe it's extremely difficult in real life, but it's fun to do and it's very useful in gameplay. So we have decided to keep it. And there are a couple of other moves which we kept for the same reason. In one of the previous episodes of Dying to Know More, I spoke to Agata Sukua. Okay. And we talked about customization. So tell me, what can we customize when it comes to parkour? There are some things you can customize, mostly things that help you when you parkour. So for example, you can deactivate like the UI uh, information about your parkour combos, or maybe you can deactivate uh, the magnetic field of the amortizers that we have in our game, or you can invert the controls for the paragliders, mm-hmm. things yeah. like that. Difficulty level? So with difficulty modes, we don't change parkour much because parkour was designed to be, as they say, easy to learn and hard to master. So I believe every player will be able to traverse the city with ease, feeling the freedom, feeling the flow of it. But of course, if you put more time into it, you will be able to do it more effectively, pull off crazier combos and stuff. So difficulty modes don't change parkour much. Maybe small things like, for example, the damage you receive when you fall down. Okay, but would you change anything if players want to? I feel, I hope the game is well balanced for everyone to enjoy. But of course, we can do some small improvements after the release, hearing players' feedback. But for sure, we will approach that with great carefulness because there are different players with different needs. Oh, so I can see that you are well prepared. Well, we are trying to. Mm -hmm. The release of the game is right around the corner, so now it's all in players' hands. And I hope they will enjoy the kind of parkour we have prepared for them, and they will feel like real parkour masters when the game releases. Thank you, Timon. I keep my fingers crossed for the smooth launch. Thank you so much. And thank you all for watching us today, and remember we see each other in the city on February 4th.